Hi everyone, this is Jay Pierre with Websites for Beginners. In this video today, we are still focusing on the ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg, which is a free plugin from Brainstorm Force, and we are looking at the block quote. We are giving the block quote four ferocious cats. It loses one because we ran into a few little hiccups here and there, but in general, we think it is a good component that you can add to a website, especially one like this that focuses on delivering services in terms of consultancy. This is a growth marketer. Interesting word, growth marketer. And I'm pretty sure Russell Ellis, he needs a quote on his about page. And a quote will show a little bit more about himself. On this page, let's bring in the quote. And one thing you will note that within WordPress, you actually get a standard quote and a pull quote. This is just additional functionality that Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg gives you with their quote. I'm going to bring it in here first. Let's say we want to add it there and simply type their quote, because if you're going to start going through all those blocks, you're probably never going to find it. Click here on block quote and there is your block quote. So you can add something here. And I thought, let's bring in something inspiring in these dark times. If you don't build your dreams, someone else will hire you to build them theirs. Ooh, that's not inspiring, is it? It's a little bit more scary, but let's, let's, <laughs> let's take that. Okay, I'm going to copy the quote first, and then we paste that. And then let's select the author, and we go back, and the author is this guy. And double click and paste that. And there we have that. I'm going to just maybe delete all of that. So we just have the name of the author. Let's style this out and see what we can do. Go to the options sidebar and we start with the first drop down layout. So we have this layout, which is modern and then quotation. Oh, that one is also pretty nice. Go back to modern and we have quote border style. That is the border there on the left. And I think, well, the double line actually is not that bad. And then you've got ridges as well, which you have to increase the thickness if you want to see exactly what that is all about. I'm going to put it back on solid and I'll reduce it. I like it subtle, so two works there for me. Over here, we then have also the border color. So again, it will be that line. Let's use the blue so that it can fit our theme design that we have here. And then even for hover, we have a color, okay? So maybe orange or yellow, because the yellow would look very nice next to that picture. That is our layout. And then you have also the option to stack it. And stacking will mean that you will have these elements on top of each other as you go through the various displays. Let's leave it on none for now. So that's our layout. Content then, we have here topography and quote color. If I click here on the color, strangely enough, I don't see any changes happening. This is the, the content here. This is where we need to see those color changes happening. I have run into this, so this is not new, and that's why I take half to one point off for the Ferocious Cats rating for this block. However, let's put it on orange, update it, and go view it on the front end, and you will see that the color indeed does reflect on the front end. So you still have that. You have that, but that's not how it should work. It should update you in the back end, so it does lose that point for that. You also have your color for the author. Author, same thing, the color does not update in the back end, but if we update it, we go to the front end, you will see again, we have that translating to the front end. So it all works very nicely there. You can also add an author image. So if you have a small little image of the author there, or if the author is you indeed, you just bring in a little image. So let's take, what's his name again? Ellis Russell or something? Very nice. He just had a name change. You know, these days you can associate to be anything. So content, let's go to the Twitter icon. If you're going to use a Twitter icon, you leave it there. Otherwise, you can deactivate it. If you're going to use it, you have a few styles that you can choose from. Icon, text, or you can have icon and text. And I actually like the icon quite a lot. You also have the effect for a little bubble. I don't see that bubble really there, or just purely as a link. And the link will work very well if you want to use text or icon and text. So let's put it on bubble and check it again on classic. And you can change the label here as well as the padding. 
these sliders, every time I say it, they are so sensitive, no idea why they are so sensitive and massive, actually. Let's reset that, take it back to something more manageable. Space between tweet and, that's our icon, and the word tweet, you can have control over that. And if you want to change the color, you can do so. And here, it's very strange that I do, in fact, have change over the color. Hmm, hmm, very interesting, all these changes. It's starting to look a lot not like Christmas, unless you really destroy your Christmas trees, because this thing is a little bit horrendous at this moment, but it gives you a very good idea of what you can do with this. Let's collapse our Twitter icon and look at spacing. We have the gap on the left. I will add that little bit of space there. Again, a very sensitive slider. So if I bring it down to 20, and then we have space here, quote, button, bottom spacing quote, bottom spacing. And this one, if I put it on 107, update it, and we go to the front end, let's see. It does add the space, but it doesn't. So this quote block from Ultimate Add-ons for Gutenberg does have some issues in the back end. It works perfectly on the front end like this border spacing here. I can do that, I can set it, it will display properly on the front end, but on the back end, you just don't know what is a going on over there. Otherwise, it works well. So if we want to have it a little bit more stretch over, let's drag it somewhere else. I'm going to just drag it there so we have a little difference. And then what do we have here? This is a info box. So I'll add some space, bring in a block spacer. And just let that go up to that area. And now what I'll have to do here is I'll have to go and change the text just to show you. So we go to content, quote color, and I'm going to put it on white. Of course, we're not going to see anything. And then also for the author name, i am put that on a little bit of a tint there. Update that. And then you will see that we will have it in white on the front end. But like I said, doesn't do it on the back end. Looking good. Looking good, very nice quote that you can have there on your page. If you don't build your dream, someone else will hire you to help them build theirs. And I'm building a page here, kind of ironic. That is then the quote. Let's quickly just throw it on the quotation one so that you can see how that will look. And then if you were to decide to stack it, it will look like this. So stack it on tablet. Going to update it, and then we go to the front and have a look for our responsive views. So I have this one. If you are going to use the quotation marks, maybe remove this image. Otherwise, you have two of these. Eh, they don't look so good on top of each other. Enable developer mode, and let's see what it does for tablet. And that's the stack mode. So you can see the image there and all of this stack with the quote on the left. And if we go to mobile, similar. Uh, I'll have to do a lot of styling to go back here and make it look acceptable. Good free plugin. Check it out. Ultimate add-ons for Gutenberg. See you in the next one. I'm Jay Pierre at Websites for Beginners.